What's up everybody, Nick Dwyer, back for this Anthony, here with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw Barry Bonds surpass Hank Aaron, hitting his 756th career home run, as well as Ichiro Suzuki hitting his 3000th career Major League Baseball hit. We don't have anything quite like that today, but we do have someone joining an exclusive club of 3,000 base hits and 500 stolen bases, as well as a PGA Championship to talk about and some more Olympic Games to get into. So if y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This Day in Sports History. We'll start off today in 1870. At officially what would be the second running of America's Cup, it would really be the first though after the original was renamed to the 100 Guinness Cup of 1851. And the magic of the New York Yacht Club would defeat Cambria of England to win for the USA. 32 years later, we move up to 1902 at the International Lawn Tennis Challenge, or what now is known as the Davis Cup. In the second edition, Malcolm Whitman would defeat Reginald Doherty 6-1, 7-5, 6-4, to give the U.S. a 3-2 win over the British Isles to claim their second of 32 titles. One year later, we remain at the International Lawn Tennis Challenge in 1903, and Lawrence Doherty would defeat William Larned 6-3, 6-8, 6-0, 2-6, 7-5, to give the British Isles a 3-1 lead. They would end up winning 4-1 to claim their first of 10 titles over the USA. Now we have a no-hitter to get into in 1931 in Major League Baseball, Senators pitcher Bobby Burke would no-hit the Red Sox in a 5-0 victory. On the day, 9 innings pitched, 5 walks allowed, 8 strikeouts, and this would be the only no-hitter in Burke's career. Five years later, we now move up to the 1936 Olympics in Berlin, and in the 3,000-meter steeplechase, there would be a finish 1-2 when Valmari Isoholo would win the gold medal with a world record time of 9 minutes, 3.8 seconds, best in teammate Carlo Tuaminen who would win silver. We have another world record to get into in those games when American Glenn Morris would win the decathlon with a total of 7,254 points, best in teammates Bob Clark and Jack Parker, but they would complete the U.S. sweep in this event, and this world record would stand until 1950, so 14 years. We move to 1976 in Major League Baseball, and the Chicago White Sox would suit up in shorts in the first game of a doubleheader, Safe to say, this experiment did not work. It was very odd watching. Must have been very odd playing for these players. They would end up wearing pants in the second game. Six years later, we go to the 1982 PGA Championship, and Ray Floyd, with a score of 8 under, would win his second championship, three strokes ahead of runner-up Lanny Watkins, to win his third of four majors. One year later, we moved to the 1983 at the first Athletics World Championship in the 100-meter dash. Carl Lewis would win gold with a time of 10.07 seconds. We stay with Carl Lewis now at the 1984 Olympics, and Lewis would win his third gold medal of those games, joining Kurt Baptiste and Thomas Jefferson in an American sweep in the 200-meter. Lewis would have an Olympic record at 19.8 seconds, but this would be broken next Olympics. Stay in those games. And Nawal El Mutawakal of Morocco would become the first female Olympic champion of a Muslim nation and the first for Morocco in the 400 meter hurdles in which she would set an Olympic record of 54.61 seconds. Finally at those games in 84, future five-time America's Cup winner Russell Coots of New Zealand would win the Finn Class Sailing Gold Medal to win his only medal in the Olympics. Four years later, we moved to golf in 1988, and at the U.S. Senior Open on the men's side, Gary Player, who played an even par over the four rounds, would win two shorts ahead of runner of Bob Charles after an 18-hole playoff. This would be Player's second straight U.S. Senior title. Then we moved to Major League Baseball in 1988, and in the first scheduled night game ever at Wrigley Field, the Cubs would play host to the Philadelphia Phillies. However, this game would not become official when the contest would be rained out in the third inning. They would have to wait yet another day. We remain in Major League Baseball two years later in 1990, and Carlton Fisk would tie Johnny Bench's record of hitting 327 home runs as a catcher for the most all-time. Now Fisk sits in second place for a catcher all-time with 348 behind Mike Piazza. We move up to the Olympics in 1992 in Barcelona, and we have a lot to talk about. Let's start in basketball with the original Dream Team with names such as Jordan. 
Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Scottie Pippen, and Carl Malone would win the gold at those games in a 117-85 victory over Croatia. It was never really any doubt that the USA was going to win this, but they just flat out dominated this competition. Then in canoeing, Bulgarian Nikolai Bukrilov would complete the C-1500 and C-1000 double after winning the latter. Move over to men's field hockey now, and Germany would go through the competition undefeated to win the gold after a 2-1 victory over Australia in those finals to claim their second of four men's field hockey gold medals. Go to the pitch now in football, and Spanish center forward Kiko would score twice in the 72nd minute and 90th minute, as Spain would win 3-2 over Poland to claim their first and only gold football medal in the Olympics. Now we move over to the track side, and Furman Katra would win Spain's first ever Olympic gold medal in a running event when he would take the 1500 in 3 minutes, 40.12 seconds. Finally, we have some boxing to get into in 92. We start with future 6-weight boxing world champion Oscar De La Hoya of the USA would defeat Marco Rudolph via points to win the lightweight gold medal. Then, in the heavyweight gold medal, Cuban boxer Felix Savon would win his first of three consecutive heavyweight gold medals when he would dominate Nigerian David Eisenriti via points at those games, and Cuba overall just dominated the boxing competition, winning seven of the 12 gold medals. Six years later, we moved to Major League Baseball in 1998, and the Twins' Paul Molitor would become the fifth player in Major League Baseball history to have at least 3,000 hits and 500 stolen bases. This would come on a day when he would go 5 for 5 and steal his 500th base, joining Ty Cobb, Honus Wagner, Eddie Collins, and Lou Brock as the only other players in MLB history to reach this milestone. There are now currently 7 members in that club. We now move all the way up to 2008, and the Summer Olympics in Beijing would officially open. One year later, we moved back to Major League Baseball in 2009, and I know I said I would stop talking about his home runs, but this is not home run, so I'm talking about it. Albert Pujols in the Cardinals 5-3 victory over the Pirates would drive in three runs, surpassing the 100 RBI mark for his ninth straight season to start his career. The only other major leader with a longer streak up to this point was Hall of Famer Al Simmons, who would accomplish this feat in 11 consecutive seasons to start his career. Sadly though, Pujols would not be able to surpass Simmons. He would only be able to get 10. But we stick with Major League Baseball in 2014. We actually have two events to talk about. We'll start with Bartolo Colon. Colon would join Juan Marichal and Pedro Martinez in becoming only the third pitcher from the Dominican Republic to win 200 Major League games. He would do this after an eight-inning performance, giving up six hits and one run in the Mets' 5-4 victory over the Phillies. Then in the Braves game, in a 7-6 victory over the Nationals, Justin and BJ, now Melvin, Upton, would both homer in the same game for the fifth time, setting the Major League record for brothers. They would each go deep off of Steven Strasburg in the game, and they would surpass the record previously shared by Jeremy and Jason Giambi and Vladimir and Wilton Guerrero. One year later, we moved to the Rugby Championships, and we start off in the third place game, and Argentina would win their first ever game against South Africa in a 37-25 victory. Then in the championship game, in those games, Australia would clinch its first ever championship with a 27-19 win over the New Zealand All Blacks. Speaking of rugby, we go to the 2016 Olympics, and in the inaugural Women's 7 Rugby Championship, Australia would defeat New Zealand 24-17 to claim the first ever gold medal in that competition. Then, in swimming in those games, Hungarian Katinka Hosu would win the women's 100 meter backstroke gold in a time of 58.45 seconds to win her second gold of those games of three overall. We end today's video off in 2018 in football, and Chelsea would sign Kepa Ariza Valaga for £72 million, which would be a world record fee for a goalkeeper. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. If I mispronounce any names, I also apologize. But I hope everybody out there is doing great. I'll see you tomorrow for Nick Wire and the 10th inning. See ya.